Okay. Uh, and uh, oops. Okay, so um, uh, sort of um, got here uh, sort of dreams and messages and signs. Yeah, dreams, messages and signs from God. And I, I think this is, from what I've heard, very, very common. Um, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure signs and dreams can be quite, it's, it's part of my own journey. So I used to, um, what was it? Yes, I was working, I mean, all my life up to the age of 30, when I had my sort of near-death spiritual experience, I had a recurring dream. And the dream was often that I'm, I'm going to an exam and I'm, I'm in fear and I'm in terror and I fail my exam. That was the kind of the dream, you know, oh, I can't do my exam, I'm gonna fail and I failed. And that dream would come to me my whole life on a, on a you know, not too frequently and not too bad in my early years. Once I started working in the stock market, uh, it became quite severe. I'd wake up in terror and I'd have these dreams of being at school, trying to pass an exam and, and failing it. And there'd be this absolute terror around it. And, uh, and that was happening, you know, every now and then I'd get this dream. It's like the, I'd, wait, I'd have these dreams of absolute terror because I was failing my exam. And it'd be like a, a similar recurring dream over and over again, but getting more intense as I was working in a very sort of egotistical, aggressive environment in the stock market. And my morals were going down the hill. Uh, I was associated with addicts and, and quite simply quite crazy people. Uh, and then, you know, I had my near-death spiritual experience. And then, uh, and then you know, um, kidney failure meant I couldn't work. And the dream, the dream, um, the dream stopped. The dream stopped and then, um, and then, I had a uh, someone I was working with in a 12-step program, uh, helping her with the food, with her food problems. And, um, and it just so happened, I mean, she became interested in Dr. David R. Hawkins and Muji. And, um, and, I, and she was one of, you know, very few people in my life, but she was a great person to do muscle testing with. So muscle testing uh, what Hawkins says with muscle testing, if you can do muscle testing accurately, then uh, you can get the answer to absolutely anything and everything, uh, as long as there's permission from God. You know, you ask permission, and then if there is permission, the universe gives permission, then you can ask any question, providing there's permission. And so I was thinking all this time, like, what work will I do? What work? I mean, yeah, you know, I'm on kidney failure, but eventually I have to work. I have to have a life purpose. It was obvious from the absolute carnage, kidney failure and destruction of my life that going back to the stock market wasn't for me. I mean, it had destroyed me. And it was obvious as I was getting into spirituality that that could not be, my, you know, I could not go back to an unspiritual job ever again. So I thought, you know, and I was thinking, you know, what can I do? I mean, I love spirituality and I love talking about spirituality and uh, I really enjoyed um, Dr. Hawkins' work, other spiritual teachers, uh, like uh, Muji at the time, and uh, just going through, and I was doing the twelve steps as Hawkins, and of course in miracles as Hawkins said, and then I, and then I thought, you know, what can I do? What can I do? I mean, I, I had the passion for spirituality. Anyway, I thought, well, you know, I've got someone here. I can just muscle test on her arm, and I can. I it was pretty clear because her answers were always one hundred percent accurate, and I had this intuition. She was extremely accurate with the muscle testing, so I knew it was. 100% on accuracy. So I was thinking, you know, what, uh, do you mind if I just ask some questions on what work I do? And uh, and then she and I was thinking, you know, what can I be? You know, what what can make money? And she said to me, well, why don't you become a spiritual teacher? I thought a spiritual teacher. I thought there's absolutely zero money, in anything to do with spiritual teacher. I mean, I, I love I love uh, learning about spirituality and from Hawkins and and teaching it. But, uh, you know, I didn't think there was that was a career. Anyway, I, I just asked it. You know, she said it and, and she was quite intuitive. And, and I checked her arm and it said yes. And then I knew what the thrust for my life would be. And, and that dream hasn't come back. So it was quite clear that it was a metaphor, that the dream was a metaphor, that, um, that a recurring metaphor, a spiritual message that you're not passing your exam. You're on the wrong track with what you're doing. You're going down the wrong road. And when I 
you know, when the road became rectified spiritually, then everything, uh, the dream, the dream stopped. So I've also heard you know, there's many dreams. You can also get many signs, not just dreams from the universe. You may also go into uh, what's uh, I believe the, called the hypnagogic or the hypnopompic state between sleep and wakefulness, uh, where your guides, your, your spirit guides can communicate with you uh, and maybe speak to you and give you messages. Uh, or you can even astral travel uh, for some people, go into different realms and have different uh, advisors, both heavenly and celestial, or go down to the darker darker lower astral realms and, and visits, uh, which I think, uh, I think many of us spiritual people have visited um, some of the more heavenly dimensions and some of the more darker dimensions. Okay, and I think there is a common theme of many people having recurring dreams and them being spiritual signs. So let's 